first episode of Down and Dirty with AB. Now we're going to talk about relationship, marriage, sex, and so much more. We might even give you guys some pointers at home. But before we get started, I'm going to let everybody introduce themselves. Go ahead, we'll start with you. Otis. Jay Sean. Cameron. Stina Diaz. Jasmine. Taylor. Okay, now drink up, loosen up a little bit, so we're in for some good conversation. So I don't know who wanna start first, but let me get let me get a little bit more. What does unconditional love mean to you? Do y'all believe in unconditional love? Of course. Uh, yes. Of course. Okay. That's, that's actually one of our models. Um, yes. It just means that you can grow in love through anything. Right. Unconditional, you know. You really can't mess up, just grow from it. You know? Regardless of the situation. Regardless. Right? Yeah, regardless. It's hard to get there. Like, right. right. Talk about that. Especially for me, as a child, you know, you always have, like, I love you if you do this, I love you, and then you start right. doing that to your partner. And I realized with my wife, I was doing it. I was like, you know, if you do this to me, I love you back. And I realized, right. like, that's not love. It's like control love. Like, you do what I tell you to do, and I love you back. Right. And then, it's still the process for me trying to break that up where it's like, no matter what you do, no matter what you look like, I'm still gonna be there for you and trying to work through that. And we had conversations about that and um, it's pretty deep, it goes pretty deep. I was gonna say like, what is the process of that? Because naturally as humans, like you said, if you do this for me, if I do that for you, it's love. But to put everything on the table, if you stab me today or you stab me tomorrow, like regardless, I'm gonna love you unconditionally. Right. Well, love is doing what's in the best interest of the others and the other person regardless. It's not about yourself. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you're living in this world where you constantly are giving, giving, giving because when you look up, you're receiving anyway. Right. Yeah, I think it boils down to being selfless first off and then actually defining like what love is and what your relationship of love is with that person. Like right. you can love drinking, but am I unconditionally gonna love drinking if it's detrimental to me? You know what I'm right. saying? Right. And okay. coming with the person, I think it just depends on are we speaking of love and like, or love and lust, or love and actual love? So that that really is what we need to focus on. And then you can decide if it's unconditional because whether you're in either of those categories, it can switch up regardless. Exactly. And you could have started off with, hey, yeah, I want this to be an unconditional love. However, these terms and conditions I didn't I didn't subscribe to. So right. I'm not sure how to work through that. So like you said, it is a lot that you gotta go through to get there. Because I feel like there should be conditions. Like yeah. abuse is on the table. Yeah. Like, you know what I right. mean? Like physical, mental, like all of that well, stuff. I mean, that's I ain't mean to cut you off. Like, I mean that's that's kind of like going without saying. You know what I'm saying? Of course, if you get beat up in your relationship, by all means. But some people yeah. still say, <laughs> yeah. yeah, like I love you. Yeah. I love yeah. you. Yeah. I mean, you don't mean to say that's not the person's best interest, right? I don't feel like that's unconditional love. That's just kind of like determining your boundaries and what you'll put up with. If that's something you'll put up with and that's not unconditionally loving someone, that's just you holding on to your insecurity and just like creating that bound. It's just like if someone crosses it, then they're just like, okay, well, you can keep crossing it. Unconditional right. love, it's like, to me, it's responsibility because it's a mm -hmm. two-way street. Like both of y'all have to be able to respect each other's boundaries. Right. So yeah. you think it's different per person? No, no, it is. I was just sitting here and I was listening to like I like to listen to everybody perspective. Like, how I view unconditional love, like for me, I can't explain it. It's more so just like a feeling in a sense. And like, um, like one person I was thinking about my mom, like she's real, she she had real unconditional love, like she would go to the bathroom for this and that and third. Right. But the closest thing I can relate to it. Is like I'm real, I'm real spiritual, so like I read the Bible, so it's more so like how you know Jesus, you know, basically is love, you know, it's patience, it's kind of like those examples. Right. That's what I feel like unconditional love is, and it's like it's hard to you know find that right. among certain people. So that's why I just it's curious to listen to everybody and hear that. But you know, essentially, that. though, you're saying love is patient, love is kind. If you're working through this with your partner and they're abusive, if love is patient. Mm -hmm. Then how is how how do you then move forward? And that's like a fork in the road, mm -hmm. right? Because if I'm being patient with you, patient with you, and I'm trying to allow you to work through whatever you got going on, even though it's hurting Hurt. me, right? Is that still not love? I is think, that still not? I think at the end of the day, I think that's I mean, not not a different situation, but dealing. I mean, going deeper into that, I feel like that's more so you thinking like, okay, is this person really for me? You see what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I know what love is. I know what it is. I know people have to go through different type of things and stuff like that, but. Is this the person I'm I'm really called to be with, you see what I'm saying? Like, 
going through like that abuse and that type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's different levels. I feel like it's different yeah, levels too. Sure. I think right. that's when that responsibility comes into play because it's like if I'm being a responsible, caring partner, I'm going to be cognizant of like the repercussions of the situations that I'm putting my partner through by right. experiencing this, living this way, doing whatever. So it's like. That's why I say it's the two-way street. It's like we both have to be responsible for ourselves, but also each other. So do you think it's a difference between someone raised off of survival versus love when they grow when they're growing up? Absolutely. And so you see that in a lot of you see that in a lot of relationships. Like there are men or there are women that are just trying to screw over the next person because they're not really conscious of what they're doing because they were raised off of survival. So what is the difference? Have you seen that in your relationship friendship? Say, it's happened with me before. Um, I was say, yeah, it's real quick too. Um, basically, it was, in my mind, love is patient, love is kind. I'm thinking, okay, well, if I grow with him and, and show him what love is, right. then eventually he will get to what love is. However, I had to face the harsh realities of some people will never see that. Right. They will never get to that point and they will never understand what love is. They will never get that so it's it's definitely a difference because in my mind if i do something for you i'm not keeping a tally list right i'm not keeping a checklist on yeah well i did this and i'm not gonna throw it back in your face however somebody based off of survival they're literally focused on their main purpose is when you do this this is how you love me when if you cannot do this you do not love me you right. know what i'm saying right. and it's like if you can't do it then i'm gonna move on to whoever can do it right. regardless of however it makes you feel so that's rude. Yeah. okay anybody else no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just gonna basically say um, I lost my train. Um, I better catch it back then. Um, it's really <laughs> not. Okay, okay. I, just, I also feel like people don't have healthy relationships with their parents as well, or right. even like their family, and I feel like that is a huge determinant factor of what you think love is and what love should be and stuff like that. Absolutely. And if, you, if you've seen dysfunction, you think that's love. You've seen people right. fighting, you think that's love, and then you right. realize like. This ain't love at all. This is abuse. This is this is like you know really tedious and toxic. All right. The time. Absolutely. So it, it all boils down to my book too. If you know better, you do better. Mm. That's right. You get what I'm saying. Right. What you don't know, you can't change. What you don't, if you, you know what you don't know, you don't know what's better because you don't know. You get what I'm saying. So that's why it's a constant battle every day to educate yourself. Not only you know with knowledge and books, but also. Um, social skills people right and just knowing how people tick and if you're not one of those individuals you're never really going to know the opposite sex or the same sex you know however right. it goes but um like when you said survival or love um people who are in relationships out of survival it can go hand in hand because if you guys love each other and you both have a strong survival habit then you guys can really conquer the world because mm -hmm. You know, you're on the same page and you're going to survive and y'all going to make it do what it do. But are people doing that work, though? That's what I'm saying. Are people that's doing, that's that, people like doing like that internal that work? Yeah. That's like, that's, that's yeah. like, good. To me, I feel like in order to do that work, it's about not only a shown expectation, but a spoken expectation. And a lot of couples don't get to that point of even communicating being able to feel or understand what it's like to have that blissful unconditional love right. because you can't yeah. get over when someone tells you hey I'm showing you how to love me or I'm telling you hey this is I don't really like this so this is my expectation of you but when you can't and that turns into an argument that's when people are like dang no, I, if you that. can't get back yeah. from that, if you go to sleep and it's a whole nother moon after right. another moon, right. that's not unconditional. Right. Unconditional is I hear you, I see you, let's do this. <laughs> right. Let's do right, right, right. Yeah. So, should a woman submit to her husband? What do y'all think? <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. She selected him. Okay. He selected her. He just did it. He used to have a little lead. What is your form of submission, though? Good question. Is this just for the men or is this for the It's for ladies, yeah, anybody. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was gonna yeah. my question. Define a submission. Exactly. Like, I really don't I don't like the connotation that it gives. Uh -oh, like that word gives. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I talk my hands. But like it depends on like it depends on your definition of submission. Like if whatever y'all agree, like whoever's in your relationship, whatever y'all agree the definition of submit is, and if y'all both cool with it, then yeah, fine. But if your definition is like clashing heads with my definition, then no. Like, uh uh. Okay. I mean, what's the real definition of oh, okay. submission? Well, yeah, that's what I was going to say. So, men are simple. 
you see what I'm saying? It's like they're literally think about two things. Okay? What's about two things? <laughs> Sex. Money. 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 So it's like one of those things that you have to remember that for years a man is is looking and choosing who's going to be this wife, who's going to be that queen on that pedestal. Right. Because when I do get there, there's a certain expectation in my mind of what a wife would be like or what she should do. What are the tasks? Like how you said, let's talk about it. Okay. But one of those things that people don't talk about before they even get married is what exactly does a man look for or what is a wife? Mm -hmm. Because to me, to answer the question, yes, I'm going to submit to my husband because I know what makes him tick. I know in terms of as a woman, he's not a woman. Cheerleading to him is not, hey, baby, you can do it, <laughs> right? You got it, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, hey, baby, um, you already know, <laughs> right? <laughs> I guess if the man is leading the household, if he's making sure that everything is covered, and, be co go ahead. And that's what I was going to say too. Go ahead. She, yeah. she, because she, I feel like there has she to be. answered that to the fullest, and that's exactly how I feel. And but I was going to say that too. You kind of left that out. It's going to naturally happen. Right. Don't right. you doing what you got to do? It's going to naturally happen. And I feel like any woman who marries a man, kind of already he fulfilled that definition. Right. You get what I'm saying? Like, I don't call the handyman to come fix anything in my house or right. on my car. I go attempt to do it myself. Then if I can't, I'm going to go to YouTube. And if I can't fix it off YouTube, then all right, man, I got to <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? But she going to let me, she going to let me dig that hole because she has to, because she knows if she doesn't, then you pretty much taking my balls. That's, that's not cool. So that's the kind of man I am. And if you're not that kind of man, then, you know, of course, you're going to be with a woman who doesn't know require those things or you know make you feel that kind of way i think that just being a man in general like what do you what does being a man mean to you mm -hmm. like to me of course you know being strong is down third but we're also providers we're also protectors so it's more so like right when you're trying to be with somebody whatever and they see like the type of man you are and, and it's that and third then they can say okay well, I'm, you know, I'm willing to submit to him they're not going to submit to like you know right. Uh, a bum, not 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 trying to say that. Or right. someone that is at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you right. gotta present something. You know what I'm saying? But like, but like how you said, you gotta be willing to. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna jump through all these hoops before but, I even, you know. Yeah, and then you got women bums. You know, women bums submit to man bums all day. You know what I'm saying? All oh, there's women bums. <laughs> <laughs> there's some bums out there. Right? So, um, they submit. To, you know, that they got their own category. You know, we got our own little categories mm -hmm. over here. So. It's, it's levels. It's, it's, it's yeah. levels, exactly. Yeah. 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 And it's yeah. about who you ask. That's you you see what I'm yeah. saying? Right. And, it, and that, that's just going to be that right there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't think submission has a negative connotation. So right. when I think of it in the guys to asking me, asking of me these things, it's like, we ain't even committed yet. We aren't even in a space for you to ask me to yeah. submit to you. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. right. We aren't even in that. So when I think of submission, it's like, Okay, can we pass, you know what I'm saying, or how we want to live our life, like what religion, what we, what we going to do, you know what I'm saying? Right. You're asking me to submit to you, and we haven't even gotten past the basics yet. So it's like, if you aren't giving me anything to work off of, essentially, I'm still a single woman. Right. I'm still going to move as a single woman, right. with or without you. And then it determines after that, okay, well, dang, this is what she accepts of our, our um, requires of me and that's gonna make him step up if he doesn't then again that's your choice to either leave or stay mm -hmm. so I think me submitting is essentially based off of okay what are you doing prior to any of us any anything moving forward towards marriage you know what I'm saying so right does religion slash spirituality play a role in who you date or marry and do you think they are different yes yes they play a role okay yeah explain um Cause you don't want to date an atheist if you believe something crazy. They don't, you know, they don't live their life on the edge very dangerously. Right. I'm equally yoked. That, exactly. That's, that's perfect. Right. You know, like, right. For me, it's like that's always the foundation. Like, if we have an issue within our relationship, let's go back to the Bible and see see what was said in him. Like, right. Because if we're gonna lay a foundation, it has to be based on a standard or a like you know something that we kind of like judge and see for ourselves. Right. Um, and that was a big piece, and we it took a, it took us a while to get to that space, but. It don't always run smooth either because it's like, go back to the Bible. Right. <laughs> That's the such and such said that. And like that it don't always run smooth, but you know, when we when we have calmer heads, be like, all right, let's go back to the foundation and get back like grounded. Because you you'll get out of whack after a while. 
So do you think they're different, um, someone being religious and someone being spiritual? I think they're kind of the same hand in hand, y'all. I, I, I feel like they're different. When you're religious, like he said, you're going off of these set principles, rules, mm -hmm. in whatever that religion is. So right. Catholics, they do this. Atheists, they do this. Um, Buddhism, whatever it is, whatever that religion standard is, and they're all completely different. Spirituality is how you connect within the universe. It's how you know right from wrong. It's how you're able to have discernment. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's what I'm right. saying. So when you're spiritual and have spirituality or are of spirit, right. then you're able to, I feel like, deeper connect into something because you don't have restraints on how you're supposed to connect right. with something or with the upper or the higher or whatever you want to call it. So, But those have points, too. Just like you said, religion, like, yeah, like yeah. being someone of, you know, a certain spirit, spirit, spirituality, um, you live your life by a code as well, mm -hmm. and facts as well, you know, right. like principles and guidelines and whatnot. So, um, yes, they're the same, but yes, they're also different. Yeah, I think spirit, sure. spirituality gives you more fluidity to to move how you want, and it's a, a case by case basis. You know what I'm saying? Some people mm -hmm. light candles, some people mm -hmm. um, yeah. meditate, some people, right. you know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. that's what spirituality is. However, Christianity. You go to church on Sundays, you go to church on Wednesday, you open up the Bible, John 3 16. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what Christianity is. You're in a it's spot. Bag, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Everybody yeah. took something from it's something, and everybody put it together. Yeah. Um, a lot yeah. of Religion is a discipline, and right. spirit is like peace within, because mm -hmm. that's within anyone. Mm -hmm. Right. See what I'm saying? Like, your spirit, your soul. So, to me, there is a difference. Yeah. I like how you said spirituality is more fluid because mm -hmm. I mean I agree with both they're not like spirituality and religion it's not mutually exclusive like you can be both mm -hmm. or you can just be one mm -hmm. it's just that more times than not most people are more religious than they are spiritual and they don't necessarily have that one on one connection like you guys said earlier mm -hmm. with right. God with spirit with whoever you are anchored to or have your allegiance to mm -hmm. So it's also based on your degree. So if you yeah. only read two chapters in the book, you really don't know God. Because people people will give you, oh, God is this, God. But God also had Job. God also had, you know, trials and tribulations and a lot of stuff. So when I'm having conversations with people, they only want to give you the, the good side like of yeah. God. But they don't want to talk about the other side mm -hmm. in which that, that encompasses a human. You come a person, a, a spirit, a, right. a God. And like, if you don't know those things, it's like you only know a portion of God. You're only teaching a portion of the, mm -hmm. of the lessons and stuff like that. But even if you read those things, that's that's <laughs> Still not, right. that's still not experiencing God because you right. can sit there and read the Bible all day and then it, right. it, it don't it's click. Clear. Something right. it don't, it don't, it don't exactly. click. Right. So well, talking about spirit, spirituality, like that's when you're going for yourself. That's when you like how you say you got a deeper connection within yourself. And I feel like once you have a deeper connection within yourself, then you let's say you want to wander back over this way. Then you you can read and you say, oh, I can understand how Job did this. Or I can, mm -hmm. you, you start piecing things yeah, together. Yeah, 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 but in order for that to happen, you have to put in the work. Correct, you know correct. See what I'm saying? Right. And that's like growing up as a kid, you put in the work by going to school. You do different activities. You sign up for different um, clubs. It doesn't matter. Throughout that time growing up as a child, where you're developing your personality. Mm -hmm. So everybody level up, oh, I'm woke, mm -hmm. is different. Mm -hmm. So if you look at it as, okay, that help me. Mm -hmm. If you look at it Listen, as... Listen, if, if... I mean, just to keep, keep it simple. You know, that's a very, 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 very simple acronym to live by. Um, if it don't make sense, it don't make dollars. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Um, don't overcomplicate it. Um, life is really not that complicated. It's all about, um, in my opinion, it's all about... Um, just doing the right thing. You know what's right and wrong. You know. Um, Some people don't. So does God give you the gift? God does give you the gift of discernment, correct? Um, not, not everybody. Not everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why not? Yeah. He gives yeah. you free will. Right. Yeah. Like, okay. He gives you free will. He gives you free will. Everybody. Right. He gives you free will. Everybody. 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 He gives you free will. And I see what you're doing. You're trying to really rope me into. So when you say go for it. pick and choose he gives you the sermon when you're saying what's right and wrong you don't feel like even if you have a connection with god god does give you that discernment regardless you don't feel that way god can give you a bunch of gifts but it's up to you like she said to put in the work to develop those mm -hmm. and to mature them so yes we all have free will yes we all have discernment to some extent but it's up to you on how you choose 
to use those gifts that God has given you or choose which ones you want to develop. Mm -hmm. Some people might like living in the dark. A lot of people think ignorance is bliss, so they're not going to sharpen that tool, mm -hmm. that gift right. of discernment to be able to differentiate right from wrong or what I think is right or what yeah. my truth is uh, opposed to somebody else's. Yeah. So that's really up to that spiritual connection that I feel like is important for an individual to have with their higher being, their higher whatever they believe in or whoever they believe in, as well as having trust in your partner to have that same or a similar spiritual relationship or connection if that's going to play a bigger role in your relationship. So y'all know this is down and dirty. So this one, you know, anybody can answer. How has your friend groups or pornography shaped how you envision your sex life? <laughs> how has that is that how has that envisioned it? I can say, and I'm only just speaking from a women's perspective on how women. Um, we talk about we we um, develop a little bit earlier. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So we talk about sexual reproductive things way early because of menstrual cycles, whatever have you. We know the the dangers of STDs and stuff like that. Right. Um, I think where the I don't want to say disconnect or where everything is shaped for a woman. We are more so focused on not trying to get pregnant mm -hmm. and not trying to get an STD. Okay, that's literally what it is. With guys, I don't think that they never really have the conversation of what sex is. You know what I'm saying? The woman makeup or whatever. And, and I guess the average age of, of people starting to have sex now is like 13, 14 or whatever it is. Wow. They, the kids are young. Okay, the kids are young. So, I mean, you really don't have those conversations. Guys go off of whatever the locker room talk is or whatever their friends are doing. That's how they learn how to develop their sexual experiences. With women, we're more so like, okay, it's only really one part on our body. Right. One that makes it make sense. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I don't know. We we learn more so off of a, a educational basis. They learn more so off of a conversational um, because that's what they go through with their friends or whatever their friends say they did. Honestly, you know, I mean, for me, let me see for myself, I learned in the dark, just touching stuff like, oh, you don't do this? And not saying a woman, but just saying how to treat a woman, like what does that experience supposed to be like? Nobody had the person of these conversations, so you just literally <clears throat> go into this blank space and like, okay, this, I guess this is what I'm supposed to do, and I'm going to keep on doing it. Just right. like, oh, no, this is not the right thing to do. And it's, right. like, <laughs> and it's just like you learn by trial, and honestly, a lot of the times, for me at least, um, and never had the conversation about the birds and bees, and Never honestly had a conversation about with the woman at the end of the day, like, you know, like, oh, what did this feel like? It's just like, shit, this is what you do, get your box up, go home. But as I got older, I was like, it's one sided. Now, exactly. now it's more becoming one sided. So now I have to find out, I have to do the research and figure out certain things about what you like versus what I like. Right. Um, now, when it comes to porn, hell yeah, I watch porn. You know, who don't? You know, I mean, if you, if you don't, you don't. I'm not going to say that. But as a kid, a boy, Coming up, we were friends. Yeah, we watched porn. Everybody did, you know. Um, looked at magazines, dirty yeah. magazines. You know, we locker room talk, boys yeah. talk, boys talk, women talk, everybody yeah. talk. Okay, and so right. you're going off an idea of what you think mm -hmm. it's supposed to go like until you grow up and yeah. marry that person, or yeah. you get really intimate with a woman, and you know you realize, okay, that really didn't work for this dude. So yeah. I'm gonna incorporate that recipe into this. Okay, that don't work for that dude, and you know you make your own recipe. However, if you really are in tune with your partner, truthful honesty is always key. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's right. what I like. Yeah. That's what I need. Yeah. And it, right. you, it's unspoken expectation. You can't have those in a marriage or a relationship because you always gonna have a salty face. Right. Yeah. Right. So yeah. you have to let them know what you like. If you like this, I like that. It has to get done because if it don't, deal breaker. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey. Absolutely. He said deal breaker <laughs> like that. <laughs> okay. What are some ways that you can spice up your sex life? Watch porn. <laughs> Toys. Together. Toys. Okay. Um, I know with my my past relationship, mm -hmm. we used to literally meet up, uh, act like we didn't know each other. Mm -hmm. So role play. And have a conversation. Yeah, and just okay. act like we just did not know each other. And then make it like a one night stand. And we just end up staying at the house because we both live there. So, okay. like, <laughs> I like it, okay. <laughs> but, um, I mean, like, talking while having sex is also a good affirmation or a good thing, honestly, because it's, sex starts in the mind. So right. I feel like once you get once you get those those vibrations going, you automatically start connecting. So it make a full circle right. on how y'all connecting. Right. Um, yeah, but I think um, men are y'all intimidated by toys in the bedroom. Question. Uh, I'm a mature man. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's different. I just okay, it's that. different. Okay. <laughs> 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 like, why would you need this when I'm here? And it's like, eh. 
I can't vibrate, that's why. <laughs> Love is all y'all got. 
guy. No, true. That's what we're being Sally Mae with. So, listen. Uncle Sam. What? That's what we're being with, love? If you got it like that, yeah. Nah. But listen, what I was saying was, um, like when I said gold digger, that was a joke, first of all. But secondly, <laughs> um, like you, you absolutely right. But as you know, everything grows, it changes, and mm -hmm. you have to be able to adapt. If you don't adapt, you die. Mm -hmm. So it no Imagine. longer is just about love. It's also about can you support your family these days? Right. You know, can you handle it? Right. And um, of course, love better play more than fifty percent of that. But at the same time, of course, you know, you marry for somebody for security because you, I gotta know if I love you, we together, I gotta know that we gonna be good for life. Right. 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 And um, right. that also plays a role into, you know, conditional love. Mm -hmm. um, because not all love is the same and not all security is the same. Some mm -hmm. people's security is, don't cheat on me. Some people's security is, um, you got that bag. Some people's yeah. security is, right. you know, nah, you ain't out in the streets, you at the house. Yeah. You mm -hmm. get what I'm saying? True. And okay. another person's levels. security is, I want you to be a good father. Mm -hmm. You know, and some people want all that wrapped into one. Mm -hmm. And with today's generation and the way the world is growing, all that really does have to be wrapped into one. Yeah, because exactly. if you're not fitting 99.9% of that, that, um, <clears throat> that list, then uh, I feel like, you know, you're forever going to be on downward spiral. Absolutely. I'm just, as far as security goes, and like I said, when the bad thing about it, when women say I'm going to marry for security, their mindset of men, I feel like this thing, tell me if I'm wrong, men feel like a woman is literally going to sit at home, spend this money, do what she wants. If she has her own money, it's her money. She's doing what she wants. Right. In my mind, in my mind, not saying that I have to work or don't have to work, but if I am, that money goes into a security blanket. That money is for right. the Wi-Fi. That money is for the laundry mm -hmm. return. That money is for our kids' extracurricular activities. However, if you, just like you said, it's forever evolving. If you just so happen to have a spell where you've lost your job or you're sick or you are unable to provide for the family how we first started off as, right. we have this whole entire thing right. to fall back on. Right. So not saying the roles cannot switch as far as who is providing. Right. However, going initially into the situation, you will absolutely have more than security for me mm -hmm. and for my offspring. Yeah. Will I want them to grow with a life where it's very bare minimum? They got to work hard? Absolutely not. Right. I want to give my kids enough to where they do not have to struggle. They do not right. have to go through that I got it out the mud attitude. I don't feel like that's Beneficial? Will they have the morals and ethics? Absolutely, but no. If I'm able to provide for my kids and they can have a car at 16 or have whatever it is for them to be successful and push right. them forward into their adult life, absolutely. And if that starts off with me marrying somebody that can be can hold me down and secure me, absolutely. Yes. Right. I think it also depends on the agreement. If the man agrees to to leave financially and the woman just stay at home, then that's the agreement that you make. If you decide to deal with somebody, that's the decision that you make. And I feel like it, it it differs, and then. There's no one size that fits all with anything. Right. But I think a man should secure, provide, and protect. I think mm -hmm. that's like the basis. Right. And based on a woman, he say he made 60000 Is that cool with you? He make a hundred job. But there's expectations that come with that mm -hmm. agreement. Right. So it's just like, if I'm making this money and I want you to sit down, then that's the agreement we got to come to. Or if we're going to be grinding, we're going to be grinding together. That's the agreement. Right. And then we build this together. So I just think it all depends on the agreement that you make with your spouse or your partner. Yeah. And, and that's how you was raised. Like, I, know, I, was, home, I, was, I was raised, I watched, you know, I have two relationships that I, two marriages that I absolutely idol. Um, my mother and my father and my uncle and my auntie. Now, both of them take care of their women to the utmost T to the respect. And so what I try and do with my wife is I try and, you know, mirror some of that because it works. Mm -hmm. and I, I won't mirror anything that doesn't work, you know, right. but it, it works. Um, in my opinion is, you know, spend it, you know what I'm saying? We agree with you, spend it. You know, you also gonna take that money, you gonna like make sure the it. house is straight, you also gonna, you can't take it with you, you know what I'm saying? But don't be a dummy, you gotta <laughs> <laughs> put something up, but I mean, spend it, I mean, you spend it. But when you're watching your dating, that no one speaks about quitting their job and that person just quits and come home and say, I know it was my responsibility, yeah, and we said I'm going to pay the rent. Yeah. I'm going to pay the rent, yeah. but I quit my job today because I believe in something different and even greater. Mm -hmm. The woman said that. Yeah. Then what do you do? It's, that's, that's interesting because, like I said, we were just talking about it because both of them are married, but you know I'm single, so we was talking about just in general, like how I function. Like if I know as a man I'm secure and I'm working towards a certain you know goal, this kind of third, like. How am I supposed to be my partner? And I was thinking, maybe I need to be my partner, kind of like, you know, how I am. You see, I'm working hard, I'm doing this. I'm trying to have, you know, let's say this bag or whatever. 
do they need to have that bag? Do they need to have everything going for themselves? I want my woman to be independent to where she don't necessarily need me, you know what I'm saying? But she wants me. Mm -hmm. And in a sense, it's like, she knows I'm gonna take care of home regardless. Like, money, if the money's there, she knows spend it, whatever. She gonna do what she wanna do. But in the day, like I just said, let's say I get sick or something. Then she has, you know, that that uh, capability of putting money away to say, okay, well, I'm, I'm gonna hold it down for this, that, and third, just in case, like, you know, so I get off my feet. Right. So it just. To answer your question, like, we don't buy nothing. If I go down, if you can't afford it, then we're not getting it. So if I can't get it, if we, we can't afford it without me, you're not buying it. So the house, if, if you can't afford the mortgage by yourself, just in case something happens to me, we're not getting it because things happen, things transition. So it's just like, right. cool. So it's just like, that's how you kind of like make security blanket in. But also, I don't want my wife to work. Like, I'm building myself up so to the point where she ain't got to work. You take care of whatever you want to take care of, and that's what she want to do. But that's just me. Right. And, that, and that's like, as a kid, we we are raised to, as boys growing up, we are raised to don't cry. Mm -hmm. We are raised to play, you know, cowboys and Indians, shoot them up, bang, bang. Um, we are raised to be rough. As a woman, she's raised to be a princess. She's, mm -hmm. you know, taught to be a princess. She's taught to be, you know, a real gentle figure, mm -hmm. to um, mirror her mother coming up and everything like that. And we're getting away from those traditional values. That's why me and her, her and I are traditional, non-traditional. Now, I was also raised to, you know, take care of your woman. In my eyes, that's taking care of my woman. Also, including our offspring that we have. And in my eyes, that's what a real man is to me. You know, the less stress I can take off of her, right. the better. You right. get what I'm saying? Because just as much as I need her, she also needs me. Mm -hmm. Now, if there's no plan involved, then, you know, that may be something you need to talk about but I mean by all means I'm here to take care of you that's what that's what I view and that's how I want to live my life I'm not speaking for nobody else but um I got it saying yeah. we're trying to get the bag I think to piggyback off of what Jazz was saying is you know it's a conversation you know yeah. because again like you said every depending on how your relationship goes like me I'm an entrepreneur I don't plan to work a job so it, you know when you date or when you marry that is a conversation that you need to have with your partner hey right. is this okay if I don't know you know you can work a nine to five you know but I'm gonna be an entrepreneur so I think that you have to have some type of because if they're like nah we're going to work then you already know that's not the part for you because if you have this goal set yeah, yeah. I'm gonna be an entrepreneur yeah. for the, to the day I die and then you know so I think that it's a conversation that you need to have and like Jazz was saying a lot of people are just you know I'm gonna do this I'm gonna quit the end it's like and then you expect the partner to I guess feel good or you know kind of make you feel good it's like if you explain the situation a little bit better then maybe they could have never said you quitting your job because what you want to pursue your dreams cool how can we you know how can we work together to make that happen instead of you know I quit my job I'll figure it out later and a lot of people you gotta have that trust you better not leave me after a week after you get on <laughs> right 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 <laughs> like, oh my God, you, you get on I promise you right. and said, I quit my job. I don't know what we're gonna do, but I got a feeling. So, my cousin, However, he told me, don't okay. do a check up on the counter, don't do it. And I, <laughs> I, I, I was cleaning out my book bag and forgot, I was on my way to work and I said, damn, I left that check stub on the counter. When I came home, it was moved, so I know she looked at it, she gonna deny it to this day. <laughs> She looked at that check stub and she was like, well, has taught me and right. it works That's what she did was she stayed home which was even smarter because in the grand scheme of things we had children and it, it really if she wasn't going you know bring in more than i was bringing in or as much then it was going to be a real um uh stressful in the household you see what i'm saying because her money will go straight to daycare and probably something else you know minimal and then while she's never home i'm never home kids is in daycare everybody's missing each other it's a real stressful life but if you can do it then by all means let one of the partners stay home but of course the other partner has to pick up their slack and i want to be a stay-at-home husband you see what i'm saying so in my eyes i'm like shit get the bag okay <laughs> well when i did it though i didn't realize that when I quit, I'm thinking I'm about to be this entrepreneur woman, but no, in our reality, no, Jasmine, 
you got to submit. You right. got to understand how to be submissive and make this work because... Not submit, grow. Well, she grew. I grew. She grew right. yes. in her life where she was still Yes, I age. grew into to developing right. out of being the selfishness and understanding that, oh man, it's more than just me. It's, okay, let's keep going. All right, how do I become better? So every week, I literally tell myself, how do I become better? I set a reminder on my phone for them affirmations to keep that balance going. You're phenomenal. Keep going. You got an amazing husband, amazing children. Be slow to speak. You, I mean, you see what I'm saying? Quick to listen. It's those reminders because as you get older, you don't have nobody holding you accountable as exactly. much. You see what I'm saying? You got to tap into that will and that self-control that is a mother effort. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, and once you have kids, it don't get Yeah, but I'm grateful. I'm forever grateful of his upbringing and mine right. because when he, the universe brought us together, and if we would have quit early on in our relationship and not got over this argument or that, we wouldn't be able to experience the blissful relationship that we have today. Right. <laughs> I think we got some really good conversation in. I think that everybody had like different opinions. Everybody spoke. I hope that we helped you guys at home. Make sure you follow me on all social media platforms at abrielbtv.com. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.